So here we are, Sunscreen Saturday, and it kind of is aligning with the sale that Supercoop is having. So I'm going to have the link in the description box below. And I actually had something planned for today that is a Supercoop product that I'm not too happy with, but I thought, since there's a sale and you'll want to know what to buy, I do, well, something I haven't tried, but I have high hopes for. I know that's weird. I'm kind of thinking maybe I should do the other one on Sunday to keep you away from the one that isn't so good, but you may like it. So let's talk about it. Today I'm going to do every single face, and I have a sample from Sephora that I got a couple of weeks ago, and this is a quarter teaspoon because the last time I did something with a sample, I measured it, and that's how much we need. Let me read to you a little bit about what they're saying about this sunscreen. What it is, a next generation daily SPF that's universal and undetectable with a refreshing, cool feeling. It's Supergoop's most powerful protection in their simplest formula ever. It's for normal, dry, combo, and oily skin. Skin care concerns fine lines, wrinkles, redness, loss of firmness, and elasticity, which sounds like it's for mature women. I'm a little bit red today. I did do, um, before I put on my skin care, I did a little exfoliation with an acid, so that'll be a lovely, calming, hopefully, thing for me. Formulation is lightweight liquid, highlighted ingredients, Crest Sprout Extract, which filters pollution, and supports the skin's barrier. Wild Butterfly Ginger Root Extract, which filters blue light and reduces the visible effects of free radicals. SPF 50 Clean Chemical SPF that protects against UVA and UVB rays. So, Evobenzone, Homosalate, Octosalate, Octocrylene. Water, alcohol, damn! Propendial, dimethicone, glycerin. I'm not going to talk about everything because some of it I can't pronounce. Boy, these are really dirty. Copolymer maltodextrin. I'm so I'm so proud of myself for being able to pr pronounce that, but I don't know what it is, so it kind of doesn't matter. There's lavender, flower, leaf, and stem extract. I don't really love essential oils because my skin can be sensitive, but that's just me. Hedicium, coronarium root extract, don't know what it is, linenol, which is a fragrance, it's not that great, camellia, which is green tea extract, tremella, which is like hyaluronic acid or glycerin, it holds like hundreds if not thousands of times its weight in water, so it really brings in that water, very hydrating. It's a very nice ingredient. Beta-glucan is a very nice ingredient. Apple fruit extract, rosemary leaf extract, raspberry leaf extract, sage leaf extract. So that's what we have going on with this. And you know what? My skincare has been on for a while, and I want to put this on. If you're new here, what we do is put on a quarter teaspoon of the sunscreen we're testing and then we let it set up and then we put on foundation to see if there are any problems. So first, is there a problem with the skincare? And then is there a problem with the foundation? I always use the reboot. That way we just have a baseline. You know, if there's an issue, we know it's probably not this because it works well with everything. I've never had any problems with this, although I have had problems with skincare. It's trash day. So there's a lot of traffic noise. Sorry. And yes, you can hear cars. When it's really clouded, it kind of holds the sound in. Now we use a quarter teaspoon because dermatologists, doctors, scientists have done a formula for us that is two milligram of product per centimeter square of surface. This is how the FDA determines and companies that make sunscreens determine what the rating is. So if you have something that says SPF 50, which this is, and you put like a little drop of it on and on, like, oh, I got my SPF 50, you don't, right? It doesn't make sense. It's dose specific. In order to get the SPF that is on the label, you need that two milligram per centimeter squared. And that's roughly a quarter teaspoon. So let's give it a go. 
I like the fact that they're saying that it's lightweight. And again, this is about a quarter teaspoon, and this is what it looks like in the hand. Always good to know. And this is what we have for texture. So it's not like those other uh, things that I really don't like, those fluids. And there's a little fragrance in here, the linenol. And I smell the alcohol as well. The alcohol is probably in there to help it dry down and set. But it's not my favorite thing. I don't like to have alcohol on my skincare because it can damage your barrier. And it does go on white, but it's faded already. And this will be an interesting test for me because I did exfoliate today with an acid and that can make me a little sensitive. It feels really comfortable on the skin. And this is drying down already, as I suspected it would. But it's really leaving a lot of shine. I'm just going to pull this back to help it out, try to get it out of my hairline. Although it's really important, you guys, to get your sunscreen as close to the hairline as possible because the things that I'm seeing on my skin pop up these days are right at my hairline. And you can't get rid of that with laser because it will take off your hair. If you're in your 30s, it might not be a big deal. When I had, um, I think I had an ER YAG, I think it was an ER YAG, to do my broken capillaries. I was about 40, 41. And the woman who did it got my widow's peak, and I was without a widow's peak for a while, which was very shocking. If you're used to looking in the mirror your whole life for 40 years and seeing that, and all of a sudden it's not there, it's like, whoa, what's going on? It did grow back. If it happened to me now, I don't know if it would grow back. So getting your sunscreen kind of in your hairline is not a horrible thing. Just be, just make sure you're getting as close as possible and don't have a border of, you know, this much around your hairline. You don't want to get it in your hair, but you definitely want to do a little protection, especially if you wear your hair pulled back a lot. All right, so I think the whiteness has abated. It feels kind of silky. Even though there's dimethicone in here, it's not dimethicone-y. It doesn't feel to me like the one that I just did from Tula, which I really like that mineral. It was dimethicone-y and I think it felt a lot like the Tatcha Silk, which I haven't reviewed yet. I will be doing that soon. I have a sample of that. This feels more watery to the touch, which is interesting because there's no oils in here. I imagine it's the tremella and the glycerin. I'm not sure. So what we're going to do is let this set up for a little while, maybe 10 minutes or so, and we'll come back and we will put on the foundation back in a flash. So that's the sound of the UPS truck, you guys. And I was like, okay, I'm going to kill a few minutes, blah, 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 blah. And I hear the truck, which he usually doesn't get here until 4 o'clock in the afternoon, which is too late to shoot. But I paid extra to get this shipped. And I guess he has to deliver it earlier or something. And look what I got. The Charlotte Tilbury bronzer. I'll be shooting that video uh, right after this one. So it will probably post Friday. Today's Thursday. So it hasn't really changed in those few minutes. It still has a slippy nature to it, but let's go in. You know, I think I gave it enough time. I know some people will give 20 minutes or so, and that's fine. It's just, that's not really my life. I want to put it on and be able to put on my foundation within 10 minutes. So let's go for it. Two pumps. I did get a little in my mouth because that's who I am, and it doesn't taste good. <laughs> I mean, if it does taste good, I'd be concerned, but blah. There's no issues at all with this, none. Huh, 
just goes on really easy and smooth. It, there's no incompatibility anywhere, not even around the nose, which I usually do get a little, you know, mishmashy stuff going on at the nose. It's a difficult area. Really, really works well together. But I do feel like this is something that I'd want to either, this is the color of the bronzer, by the way, I want to let set up for a long time or I'm going to have to powder one or the other. So you know what? Let's just wait 10 more minutes and come back and then we'll put on a little bit of blush and some concealer and, and well, I'll probably do that anyway before I come back. And we'll see what happens with a couple of products on top back in a flash. All right, it has been about 10 minutes and I still have some sheen and it still feels a little bit tacky, but I want to try a cream blush first before I go on with a powder. So I'm going to go in with the Say and Chili and boop, 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 boop. Sounds incredibly important. And just take some off. And maybe I'll just kind of put a little bit up here since I'm going to do that bronzer video next and I want to get that sun kissed look. I'm a little further down than I wanted to, so we're just going to go for it. Really get that flushed kind of look. And there's no problem at all. It is blending in very nicely. It's not taking off my foundation but it doesn't feel dry and it still has quite a bit of sheen to it. Okay, no problem with that. Now, I don't really want to put powder on because I recently pulled out this. Again, this is the Rain Morris Mattifier and it's just so genius. Oftentimes when I go in with a powder and the face is this shiny, I have to put on a lot and then I don't really love the look all that much. So I'm giving this a go. I, I haven't tried it on something this shiny, so I'm not sure. And this kind of wet feeling. I'm not sure what I'm going to get from it. It mattified just a little bit, so it's not quite as shiny. There. This is much, much more doable for me. For a finish for every day. So this is quite pretty. It is something that would be suitable for all skin tones because it doesn't leave a white cast. It doesn't feel drying in the least. I didn't get any of the pins and needles, which I generally, I don't get that with a chemical. I get that with mineral sunscreens. And the other product that I use, the one blush I used, went on just fine. No incompatibilities. So this is something that you might want to consider for the sale. And again, I will leave a link down below. Just hit that more word, not a button, but a word, and it will show you all the links, including my foundation colors and that kind of good stuff. And that is going to wrap up today's video, you guys. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. I hope it was helpful to you, and I hope you come back again. Until we meet again, be safe. I got my booster, my second booster yesterday, and smart, and I'm wishing you good health. Lucy! Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> what? Let's go! Let's go! <laughs>